that's what they all say. And she's coming after the class, hey, and then she'll be here. Are we live?
And as we exhale out, we exhale out anything that does not match that perfection that grace is. And I invite us now to just return to normal breathing. Reminded and aware that the power that powers each of us breathes us, lives us, is infinite as our very beingness. It is always perfect, whole, and complete. It is the I am that I am. It is the I am that you are. And it is from this place of unity and oneness that I consecrate this time of stillness and sacred silence as a charging station, as a place for healing, transformation, revelation. Seeing ourselves plugged into the source with the capital S, also spirit with the capital S, the divine with the capital D, God with the capital G, whatever works for you as your source and supply and sufficiency. And in this place where we are connected, our connectedness, all of our needs are met instantly and automatically. It's our birthright as a child of the divine, as a child of the most high God, as a masterpiece of the creator of all in all, as all, through all, and so just know as your breathing continues in your connectedness, if you're willing, just allow for a total reboot. You can think of it as a restart, or you can think of it as a complete shutdown, so that the charge takes place in through and as your very being, in through and as your physical body temple, and through and as your spiritual, mental, and emotional selves, allowing to be imbued with all needs met, now and right on time, every time. No delay, nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing needing, nothing wanting. A wash and a flow of good with a capital G. If it helps in your mind's eye to have an image, you may think of spirit as the sea or the ocean. And as we often do, we describe ourselves as a wave that comes in from this sea to the shore. No two waves alike. Each of us individualized expressions of the source energy that created us perfect, whole, ideal, and complete. And so I invite you to rest in this place, allowing anything that needs to be made forth known to you. Let it be known, struggle for nothing. If you're open, just remain open. If you're willing to be completely recharged and refreshed, reinvigorated, infused with the truth about yourself, Let's do that now, together, in this place, in this space.
Relax and we allow your breathing to take you even deeper into the surrender of the I am that I am. good are you willing to accept now?
invite you to become aware of your breathing and your breath. And as we do, just simply allow for your heart space to fill with gratitude. Grateful for this time of surrender and stillness. Grateful for any insight, revelation, transformation, healing. Grateful for any awareness, anything that you were willing to surrender and let go, any new spiritual quality or trait or insight. Just grateful for the beingness, grateful for the stillness, grateful for the allness. As we continue to be mindful of our breathing, just inviting you to bring your awareness and attention back to your place within the chair, your place within the physical body temple. You may want to tap your toes on the ground or put the tips of your fingertips together. And as you're ready, just gently and easily allow for the outer eyes to open. As we prepare the sanctuary space for the continuation of our Wednesday evening service, as the musicians come forward, grateful I am to each of you present for keeping your commitment to the divine, to the I am that you are, to your spiritual practice, to building that spiritual muscle, that place within you that can never be, nor ever was ever hurt, harmed or in danger in any way. Namaste.
totally annoying. And if we are, somebody just out there, just play one of your instruments and we'll be <laughs> So the talk, the talk of your struggle, right? Do you want to frame it one more time or do you want me to just go in? I don't think I we always like to struggle, so, right? and, and I think it's really important that when we're speaking here, we also speak all the time and almost every time about the basics of science of mind, right? right? It doesn't matter how many years you've been in science of mind. The basics of science of mind are really important. And you said that outside the doors, there is a saying, and it says, Change your thinking, change your life. And tonight's topic is? Changing our thinking during a struggle. Okay, so my notes came to me so fast at home. Okay. It was like, do less, uh, be more. Yes. So like, because I, I don't, I mean, I, I feel like every day could be a struggle. If you watch the news yes. every day, you could have even more struggle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You can. I sometimes watch it and it's low or when I'm working and I, and then I'm like, oh my, you can, you know, have you ever gone into a house or it, sometimes my parents' house used to be like this, where it was a certain channel all the time. Yeah. I couldn't even go in their house. I'm like, I'm not coming in your channel. Yeah. So I got them to start watching Hallmark movies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And they even have Christmas Hallmark movies in July. Yes. And something happy, right, in the background. Yes. And something where if you watch only the last five minutes that you, right, of a two hour movie, you can kind of understand the whole thing. Yes. So, what I wanted to say about struggling is, I don't think we're meant to struggle. I really don't believe, I believe that God is good, and God I used to say, God all, the time. All, the time. Right. all the time. And life is good, all the time. And that was always said because God is good all the time. And sometimes they'd come, they'd come in, I remember, in the middle of a, of a night talk, and they'd go, good morning, and they, they always say that it's always morning, in the spiritual universe because the sun never sets. Mm -hmm. And there you have it. And so for me, the, the, the quickest thing that came to me was do less, be more. And then I wrote the words contemplate, stillness, silence. Let's see if I can read my writing. Oh, you can reflect. You can use the struggle to reflect. And at the same time, if you're really in the midst of the struggle, I say embrace it. I mean, if you want to scream, scream. You want to cry, cry. Giving, Brother Mark is giving permission to cry, right? And I think that, I think a lot of struggle is an invitation to a lesson or a learning. And in Science of Mind, what I know and what I was taught and what I teach is that lessons are repeated until learned. For example, if in romance we pick a uh, a certain type of partner, but we haven't learned the lesson about what we need to be. And I would, we would always say in romance, we'd say, um, you be all the qualities you want in your partner first. Yes. Right? You have to make the list of all the qualities that you want in your romantic partner. Be those, embody those, and then you attract, because we're energy beings, the same thing that you're looking for. You see? Yeah. So if you're, however, and... You, it, right? if, you have, if you haven't suffered enough, if you haven't learned the lesson, you might, in another person, get in the same exact lesson if you haven't been willing to surrender and learn your lesson. Right. Right. This is things we say, I don't know who else has said it, but you attract what you exact. You attract what you exact. And I think that that's the uh, other part of change your thinking, change your life is that principle of mental equivalence. And I know Dr. Gary's gonna cover that a little bit. But the main thing about that is, if, you're, if, you, if you embody it at 100%, you can manifest it at 100%. Yes. Okay, I think that might be it. I'm ready to go to the next person, and if I need to come back, I might have some more notes. Okay. Who's, who's ready to go? Do you wanna talk oh. about mental equivalence? Is that oh, what that what I, is that what I'm talking about? That's what I'm talking about. You talk about what you want. Sure, you talk about what you want. Sure, you want. <laughs> well, I tell you, that when you, you we came up with this, you know, what do we do when we struggle? I mean, how many of us have been in an experience that, you know, it feels like we're in a box? I mean, you see, every time we turn, we turn one direction and say, I'm gonna do something this way, we run into something that blocks us. We go another direction, we run into something that blocks us. Forward, backward, it just feels like we're, we're totally just, you know, we're just squared in. You know, that's not an uncommon experience for us to have because that really is kind of the human experience is that we usually dig ourselves enough of a hole that frankly, we've got, we've got four sides. 
Thing is, when you're in a hole, it's like in a box. Thing is, there's an open lid at the top. And that's what I want you to focus on is that when you change your thinking is that you have to take a look at there is something to look up to. The thing is that that something to look up to is the divine spirit that's already there waiting for you to say, I'm ready to accept what you have for me. Trouble is that what we've done is that if we've created this box, we've actually created the experience of lack and limitation because we don't, we, we, we're, we don't, we're not in sync with spirit. We're not, uh, we're not booted up to the, the right, right computer. What we want to do is make sure that we've embraced that idea and that shows up that shows up in such a, a wonderful way that it's kind of like a kind of like a check-in is that do you or do you not believe that you have enough to go and do all the things that you need to do the thing is that is the gift that was given to you when you came into this form that is the gift the thing is that sometimes we don't believe that so what was what has happened since the point that we received the gift and now is we've accepted something different or we've actually allowed something to come into our mind that, to make us believe that gee I guess I'm not enough and that's not the truth that's not the truth because you actually have everything that's necessary the gift is there and the thing is that when we, we come, to, come to the point that we actually can say okay God and we say use me basically but basically you open up to the idea of the spirit okay I kept trying to, you know, I kept trying to do this by myself, and you basically allow the spirit to come in, and that's done through prayer, through meditation, through uh, through affirmations, whatever, whatever is working for you. But those are the types of things that will take you from a uh, a challenge thinker to a possibility thinker. These are the types of things that allow you to continue to grow and flow and be part of the the knowing. Is and the thing is that. Once you're there, the answers that are necessary for you to, to move forward, the answers that are, that, are, that are just waiting for you to be ready for them, they show up. The answers are already, already there waiting for you. And as you allow the, the process to unfold in you, then it basically allows you to be more of who you really are. It's already, it's already inside. So it's kind of like a faith check. I mean, basically, you have to believe that you actually um, are a divine spark of God. And if you don't, then the answer that you might get from God when you say, God, what do I need to do to help this happen? Is they, they might just say, you got to learn more. You got to basically say, you got to say, there, you, you got to figure, you got to figure this thing out. You have to have more faith. And sometimes, sometimes I treat for more faith because I realize that there's just something that I'm just not buying into that I actually have to allow it to be part of who I am. And when I do that, that's when the, that's when the divine starts flowing and all of a sudden the, the abundance shows up in, in all of the areas that I, that I wanted to show up. So, do I do five minutes? I guess five minutes, so. <laughs> I can't see I'll, 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 I'll talk more, I can go on for yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Um. And I'm going to take from my own, share my own personal experience with, with things. Um, when, I, when I'm not in a struggle or a challenge, like I know all the things to say, do, like it just comes to me. Of course, the metaphors, the learning, the, the lessons, the spiritual aspect of everything, it's very clear. It's right there, of course. And there have this part of myself that talks to myself and it's like, well, yes, absolutely we know how to dig deeper into the challenges and find the spiritual upliftment and enlightenment and I know how to connect to source and I know how to find the answers and it's all lofty and good when I'm feeling good <laughs> and then boom that other part of me comes out and it's like I go right back into the same language that I've used before I learned all these tools in this language so one of the things that I do is I have to constantly monitor my thoughts I have to constantly monitor my thinking. It's one thing to have those thoughts that go by like a tickler, you know, like the news, and you can like see 18 different things at once on the television, or it's just fast and going. But then I'll, all of a sudden I'll have to pay attention and I can look at my body language and I look at how I'm carrying myself and I realize I am stewing in certain thoughts about things and I don't know how to let it go. I don't know, it's got a grip on me and I'm allowing it to have that grip and I don't know how to let it go. So. I have learned, and I literally do this, I have learned 
to say, stop. I will, and then it'll stop for a second. Sometimes the thoughts will start going. And I don't know about you guys, but when I have certain places that I go to on a regular basis, like say I have a little table that I sit at, because I tend to think certain things there or use that as for a specific purpose, I will walk right back into my same thoughts. So I can be going, doing the dishes, thinking about this, singing a song, not having anything, and then I'll go out and sit on the table and wham! It's like a sinkhole, and I'm right back into the negative thoughts, and I have to pay attention to it. It's like they're stuck there in that energy. They just are waiting for me, like, like germs on a door handle. They come back alive. So I will literally say to myself, stop. Out loud or just to yourself? In my head. Oh. But we, it's like talking to myself out loud in my head. But I'm sure if I had to, I could say stop out loud. I just don't always talk out loud. <laughs> but I will let. That's just me. Um, and then I'll have to say, I'm okay. This is temporary. This is not the truth of who I am. And that's when, and then I'll, then it will start to at least lessen that grip. I can stop stewing. I can turn off the pot and stop brewing this ridiculously strong, nasty coffee because we're done obsessing in it. And I've found myself a way to at least step back and get out of it. So stop. <laughs> so I just saw something recently where, where uh, the post said, uh, thoughts are like clouds. You know, you, you can you can think of how many clouds there are, and you don't have to believe all of it. Right. You don't have to believe everything yeah. you think is another good one. Thank you. Excellent, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the most powerful things that I do for myself is I've started really focusing on those denials. Because I will say for myself, the last six years have, have been pretty rough. And I never thought, seven years ago, I never thought I would have the challenges that I have at this time in my life. And so I have to start with those denials where, of course, I had to really come to understand that a denial wasn't about denying what I'm seeing, right? Denying the appearance of something, which is what I used to think it meant. Like I could just deny, oh, my body's not in any pain at all, you know, because I couldn't believe that. I would feel pain. So I had to understand that a denial is about reminding myself that I'm the only one who's putting those obstacles out there. I'm the one who's seeing obstacles. It's my perception. A denial is saying, you're not small and limited. You are an unlimited being in a body. You are an emanation of source energy. That's what a denial is. It's telling you who who you think you are is not it's not the truth of you right the limitation all that stuff we buy into we have things happen in our lives and I know I used to get really frustrated and actually feel kind of isolated because I'm a spiritual person I'm a metaphysical person and yet when something bad would happen to have somebody say oh well you attracted that negative experience to the law of attraction and I would just be like Ow. I was like, like, pull that knife out of my back. You know, thank you so much for your support. <laughs> but do you know? I mean, I, I study the laws, okay? I study the universal laws. We cannot change everything through positive thinking. You cannot change what time the sun is going to rise in the morning. You cannot change the weather. I mean, maybe if we had a mass group of people meditating, I believe we could make huge changes. I, I do believe that. But we're talking about our own lives and our own struggles right here. And so what the denial helps us understand then, okay, I'm, a, I'm an unlimited being in a body. This experience I am struggling with, the experience, can I change the experience? Can it be changed? And maybe it can because maybe it's not the weather. Maybe it's not how much we hate how hot it is outside. Maybe our struggle is something else. They can be changed. And so then the denial leads us into the question, okay, what do I need to do to change this? How does spirit want to express through me? How, what, what's waiting to be revealed right now? 
Now, what if it can't be changed? What if that struggle, the thing we're struggling with, the appearance of that struggle right there, what if it cannot be changed? We can rise above it. And so that's the next question then. All right, how do I rise above this? What is waiting to be revealed through me now? So that's how, that's what I really like. When I am really struggling, and I, I also recommend call here to the center. If you're really struggling with something, call to the center. Give Eileen your name and number. Say, have a practitioner call me, help me. Yes. Okay, call, ask for help. Or if you need to call a professional. But I know for myself, I've sometimes stewed, stewed. And I'm like, I don't even know where to start. I'm feeling so bad. Mm -hmm. But if I can say that one thing, I'm an unlimited being in a body. Let's say it. Yeah. I am an unlimited <laughs> being in a body. Again. I am an unlimited <laughs> being in a body. And luckily, because we're an unlimited being in a body, we were actually designed to expand right out of those struggles. We're designed to expand so much that the struggle can't fit around us anymore. So that's, that's where I start. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks. I, I, yeah. I was gonna say, just be real gentle, be authentic, mm -hmm. take baby steps. You mm -hmm. said I was holding on to the, that thought too of asking for help. It's very brave. Mm -hmm. It's very brave to ask for help mm -hmm. or encouragement even. If you can't ask for help, ask for encouragement. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna call somebody, you know, you could scroll through and know exactly who not to call. <laughs> well, think about it. Yeah. I think when sometimes when people are struggling and you, you're not ready to, to give up your struggle, you may call the person you could gossip to, to keep you there. Mm -hmm. You may call somebody who's gonna take you down even further and just remind you how, <laughs> all right, what an s-hole. <laughs> that's whole confusing. You know, like you might, you might take, they might, you might be looking for somebody to, re, you know, affirm your, you know, the negative. So we want to do what is that? There's got to be a Disney bear that sings about the positive, right? Accentuate the positive. Is that blue? Wait, it was no, from the blue. Jungle Book. Okay, there we go. Blue. 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 All right. I was just saying you can't fool spirit either. I just want you to know that. You could try, but you cannot fool spirit. Spirit wins. So if you're just in a, in, a, in a dark place, start with everything everybody said, baby steps, right? Encouragement, um, ask for help. But yeah, I would like to throw somebody in here. I, I know somebody, and she will actually say, just choose to be happy. No, it's not always easy. And sometimes it's not that easy. I mean, if you're grieving a loss, yes. If you're grieving a loss of a love or yes. a lifestyle yes. or a job or a person, yeah, cho just choosing happiness, it's it's too big of a step. I mean, you could just say no. Yeah. I mean, on some things yeah, you, you can, can you can say no. It, sometimes it's appropriate to to grieve, go through the. It's always appropriate to grieve. It's always appropriate to grieve. And we get to happiness again eventually through our choices and through our actions. Through remembering we're a divine being in a body. Through remembering we were designed to grow out of the struggle. We can get to that happiness. And maybe it'll take five steps or 50 or two. Yeah. Yeah. With grief, I think, and with depression, I don't think it's a, it's not always simple. Mm -hmm. And so for, for me, some of the things when I've been really, really dark or down or experience great loss. Even before I had science of mind, I experienced a loss. And when I was 30, I'm now almost 60, I'm 57. It, it, was, it was devastating. But I remember going to like the grief recovery groups and everyone would tell the same story every week and I'm like, I'm not going back there. I'm not judging other people, it just wasn't for me. Yeah. I'm like, I cannot tell the same story, but I didn't have the tools, I didn't know. So sometimes it's just learning about what tools might work for you. It could be science of mind, it could be any teaching. That's a teaching of spiritual truth. Science of mind welcomes all that. Some of the other things I might have tried is when you write a letter or a question to yourself, like what is this lesson trying to teach me? You can write the question with your dominant hand, I'm normally right-handed, and then try to answer it with your non-dominant hand, but don't move the pen or pencil. Just let it move. And it may or may not answer you, it may use a word you never use, it may just give you a couple symbols, but I guarantee you that's how, at least for me, it's worked to access something higher that the small me uh, hasn't found before. It's just another method. Anything else? Yeah. 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 Y
Anybody else? I want to talk about, for me, I'm a huge believer and fan of, of talking things out. And I call them intentional sacred conversations. So there is a difference between calling somebody that's going to validate your negative experience or even feel sorry for you because we don't necessarily need that in the moment. But when you have a sacred conversation with someone, whether it is a truly trusted friend, a therapist, a practitioner, a coach, um, it, there is an alchemy that happens and something changes. And how many times have you written something out, said something, and you're like, oh, okay, I feel, really, I feel better now. Because it, it, it's almost like a pressure cooker steam can just come off. But the thing is, once you've done that, kind of like in our prayer treatments, and so it is, we let it go. A key thing is to let it go. Yes. Because when we then talk about it over and over and over and over again to the next friend and the next friend and the next friend and the next friend, and you hear the same story, you're just reliving it because our body doesn't really know the difference and our mind doesn't really know the difference. So you hear you have a sense of relief. And you're like, oh. It's like going to the grocery store, driving home, and then deciding I'm gonna go back to the grocery store and then drive home, and then go back to the grocery store and then drive home. Yeah. So that's Plus you can stay in the past. You could stay Absolutely. Yeah, there's no Absolutely. time to spare it. So I, I spent some time when I was really sad in the past. And I wasn't aware until I learned that it's not gonna serve me. And maybe it was serving me. You know? Yeah. I'm, and, I'm okay. But there I, is you know what I'm saying? Like maybe yeah. the lessons until I learned them all were serving me. And then I have to realize to choose to go to the next moment that's in the, in the future. But I think we also have this sort of bizarre <coughs> fear that if we let go of our stories, we lose who we are. And we are not our stories or our past. But I know there's a lot of times we get stuck in, in if I let this go, who will I be? Who am I without my horrific stories? Who am I without my sacrifices? Who am I without my challenges? And the thing is, we're just letting go of the stories because who we are is a divine, infinite being in a body who happened to watch a movie and experience it of these things. And we don't need to keep going back to the same movie. That is not who we are. By movie, I mean my, our life. So that's just, yeah. Do you guys have any? Um, you know, everyone, everyone's gotten, gotten it real clear that we all got stuff. You know, it's like luggage, basically. We want to carry it around because it's you know, it's, it's part of who we are. We want to be able to put on put on that shirt of shame. We want to be able to be able to, to take a look at uh, the, uh, the those shoes that uh, that walked a, walked a thousand miles in the wrong direction. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that we just carry around with us that don't serve us. There's a reason that we do that, though. And the thing is that you have to take a look at as we you know, we kind of talked about is that you need to find out well what. Because if you can't let it go, I mean, if there's something that's just so there that you, it, it, it's, it's something you just can't quite separate yourself from, then you gotta learn why is it there? Figure out what's happening. And then once you figure you know, figure out how that works for you, you know, then you can basically say, okay, you know, I, I've learned that lesson. So I can now let this go, right? And yeah, that's right, you can let it go. The thing is that if it's, if it's been hanging around, there's a reason for it. There's a reason that it showed up in the first place, and the thing is that we keep reliving that same reason that we, we carry it around, so we just, you know, we, we have this luggage. The thing is, you can put the luggage down, and it disappears just as easily as it formed in, uh, in your life. It's just that it's sometimes harder to let stuff go, because we, we, we basically think, who am I, as you say, you know, who am I going to be when I'm no longer that person? I mean, everyone knows me as the person that uh, that you know that uh, is unreliable. So what happens when I'm not unreliable anymore? Mm. You know, might be something so extra special. The thing is that that's the opportunity that you have is to allow yourself to be that new person, allow it to come in and, to, and, and, and allow the the gift of being you to show up because really. It's you that will show up when you finally let go of all the stuff that's not serving you. Okay. 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 Does anybody have any questions? I think we should encourage that if you do. Absolutely. Need some or comments. Yeah. Uh, you talked about it. Um, do you guys ever find that, uh, that when you look at what you do and you're feeling great, you can transfer that 
have to have the attention when you're feeling lousy. Like, I was with a friend earlier, and she, she said, yeah, like, I do all these amazing things when I'm feeling on top of the world, but then I forget these things to do when I'm stuck by sing or ride or, you know, watch your favorite, like, TV show or something. So um, I think that that's just something, I'm kind of posing a question as an example for, and also commenting to say that, like, sometimes the very thing that is helpful when you feel really, like, off kind of is an alignment with you and with your life and feel like everything's going well, that that could be the very thing that you need to do to lift you back up. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything? Absolutely. I think, well, I was, one, a quote I've been thinking about a lot recently is, it's not what you do, it's how you do it. Because I've been thinking a lot about how we create a template in the present moment that will create our day tomorrow. And so I was thinking, all right, so my template, it's not about what I'm doing. It's not like if I do the dishes and then do some laundry and then pick up after the dogs, that that's what I have to do tomorrow. It's how I did the dishes, how I did the laundry, how I picked up after the dogs. So I have been thinking about that a lot. And so for myself, what I've been doing is like thinking, okay, well, what's the energy that I want to put into my template? And, if, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I was acting out of resentment. I was acting out of obligation. What? Well, I, I don't want to experience that again tomorrow. I don't want to relive that day. So I'm like, okay, freedom. That's what I want to act out. I'm going to act out of freedom. And so I did. I did, like, consciously I was choosing, like, to pick a better energy. So I was changing not what I did, but how I did it. Now for me, what, one thing I do, I try to do, is exercise. And so it, I think it answers your question of when you're feeling great and when you're feeling lousy. And so I always try to think of if I'm coming here and I know I'm gonna be doing a meditation or if I'm gonna be speaking or even the pulpit duty, I try not to come here unless I've already taken care of me because I feel like if somebody counts on me, whether they actually approach me or not, I feel like we're doing a service, uh, whether we s you know, speak directly to anybody or not, we give a lot of energy. And so for people that give a lot of energy, I would say, for me, exercise really helps. And then also, when I go home, sometimes I'll have, not often do I have to shower the whole thing off, but I'll almost always at least wash my face after, just to kind of clear and say, now I'm done with my with that part of my service. It's a weird thing, but and I don't normally don't share what I do, but I can tell you for me, if I'm not really feeling up to it, and you're coming to be of service, I don't think I should come unless I do the, I don't think I could be a, as good a service if I don't take care of, of me. And so that goes for all the caretakers out there. If you don't exercise, at least walk. You know, if you, you know what I'm saying? Power walk. I think, um, I think sometimes I call it uh, like kind of like energy level amnesia. So I'll forget when I'm in a lower energy or feeling upset and troubled what I like, what works for me, how to change my energy. I just like sink and it's like, submarine you can't quite see above the surface mm -hmm. so sometimes i know that feeling and sometimes to be perfectly honest i'll know there's a choice i can make to change my energy and move out of it and kind of raise my vibration just a little and i will stubbornly choose not to because i'm just not ready yet i just am like no i want to stay just like this <laughs> and you know and, it's, and then another thing i say to Jared can attest to this when it's that way and I realize I did not make the choices I needed to make. Well, tomorrow's another day. <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow's another day. But I like the template that you talk about too. So if you're not there, you're not there. Bless you, Derek. Does anybody else have anything? Go ahead, Tia. I, I just want to take a comment on your question. Okay. Because that has happened to me. So I decided years ago to actually write down what makes me happy oh, because when I'm in struggle, forget it. Yes. Yeah. It's, 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 I have to, I have to, I have to literally have to look at the list, which is fine. And sometimes if I can't find it or, or whatever, then when I'm happy again, I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that list down. Yeah. It's not like I wrote it once eight years ago. So Tia's saying she's writing down, right? The yeah. Things that we've done. How, how many days have you done your gratitude journal at the end? Days? Yeah, you've been doing the whole year. It's been years. What, what's yeah. up, really? What's yeah. up on your posting? What's the date that it is? Oh, you know what? I didn't start.
started over this year on my birthday. I decided to do synchronicities instead. Because uh, I have done the gratitude posts on Facebook for years. I love it. When I see my Facebook memories pop up, there's like 10 things to read. No, there's not 10, but there's three or four. There's three or four. Yeah. And along with the list, uh, vision board of those things is also good because then you don't even have to read it. You just see the energy and the picture of stuff that you like to. Anybody else? The look can change over yeah. time. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It better change as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Are you guys, that growth here. Is everybody all set for the for we wrap it up? Okay, so we'll do a closing treatment. Do you want to start recognition? Scott, uh, what, Bern, do you want to stand up? You can you want to start recognition and go unification, realization, and I'll finish okay. up. Okay. Recognition step? Yeah, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, okay. I acknowledge the loving spirit that is in this room, the universe that we are all a part of, the connectedness that we are to this source. The source is all around us, the source is in us, and we are this source. And if this source is everywhere present, in us, through us, all around us, that means that we too are an emanation of source energy. Anything source can do So as I've accepted this source as my energy, I celebrate this wonderful idea that we're here to learn how to deal with stuff. And I've gotten wonderful ideas, things that I can try, new ways of thinking. And as I do these new things, results show up. Now we just hold it in our mind's eye. Uh, anyone we hold in prayer, just hold them in your mind's eye, surround them, and dwell them with love and like intelligence, perfect health and wholeness. And allow for your heart space simply to fill with gratitude now. Let's just breathe in the gratitude. And exhale out gratitude. Let's breathe in joy. Exhale out joy. And from this place of a truly thankful and grateful heart, I surrender this word to the law of life walking around now with great expectancy that everything that's been prayed about and for is true right here and right now simply because we say so and together we say and so, so it is. is amen okay you want to do a closing song let's do a closing song thank you song. everybody thank you reverend yeah thank you that was fun Thank you guys for clapping.